on, stand up all across the room. Lift up your hands. Let's stand and sing praise. He is the answer. Jesus, you are the Holy One. All across this room tonight, we're singing praises to you, Lord. Looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. We sing praises unto your name. Calling upon you, Lord, to fill us, Lord, with your spirit. To flood us with your glory. All across this room tonight, we pray, Lord, for an outpouring of your spirit. Every person here tonight, everyone who's watching, I come into agreement right now for the anointing of God to be released into your life. In every area, every need, I set myself in agreement for signs, wonders, and miracles to be released into your life. Things that you're believing for, things that you're needing, dreams and visions, breakthroughs, turnarounds, supernatural provision, wisdom, all the things that you need in your life right now. Jesus is the answer. And everything that you have need of, every question that you have, everything you're wondering about, the answer is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's in Him we move and have our being. Everything that you have need of, He's provided. Everything for godliness and everything in this life that you have need of, He's already provided. Now lift up your hands and just receive it right now. Yeah, come on. Father, fill us. Feel them, Lord. Download your spirit. Download your wisdom from heaven and open heaven over this place. The glory of God filling this place. You that are watching, wherever you are, there is no distance in prayer. And we're speaking and declaring God's word, God's anointing, God's provision into your life. Come on, shout to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, everybody, say so. Hallelujah. Now, just before you're seated, I want you to turn to two or three people and tell them, I can't wait for the Word of God. I can hardly wait for the Word of God. After you tell two or three people, you can be seated. I can hardly wait for the Word of God. At home, you can just say it to yourself or somebody there. Just say, I can hardly wait for the Word of God. Well, tell that person next to you, you're in the right place. We're so glad you're here tonight. And since you can hardly wait for the Word of God, let's go ahead and get into the Word tonight. Turn over to Psalm chapter 5, and we're going to go ahead and get right in uh, to the Word of God. In fact, uh, to start with tonight, what I want to do is I'm going to read through about four or five verses, uh, scriptures here, to lay a foundation of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about God's divine favor, and particularly growing in that favor, growing in God's favor. Everybody say, growing in God's favor. So turn to Psalm chapter 5. If you've got your Bible, just wave it at me. Hold up your Bible if you got it with me and wave it. I want to see how many. If it's in your computer, yeah, i got the iPad. That's great as long as you've got it. If you don't have a, a Bible, I want to encourage you, every time you come to church, make sure you bring your sword with you. That's the Bible. That's the Word of God. We're a church that reads, studies, preaches, and teaches the Word of God, and we're going to take you to the Word every time we meet, and so we want you to learn how to go through that Bible. We'll teach you as, as we're preaching how to find it and read through it. We put Scripture up on the screen. We believe the answer is in the Word, and we want to put the Word of God inside of you. So Psalm chapter 5, we're going to start there. But before we go there, I want you to take out a piece of paper. Or if you've got your iPad or phone, you can pull up your little pad, notepad there. And I want you to number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down the side of it. And I'm going to take about 60 seconds here. And here's what I want you to do. Listen very carefully. I want you, where you've written down those numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down the side of the page, I want you to write the names of five people you think deserve or ought to have the favor of God in their life. It be somebody you know, family member, friend, somebody you know from a distance, but very quickly, going to give you 60 seconds. Go ahead, start writing, start typing it in, the names of five people you feel, believe, deserve, ought to have the favor of God. 45 more seconds. You ought to have one or two names down. That's it. Just write the name. First name, what it, you can just write the first name if you know who it is. 30 more seconds. We're going to put five names of people you feel deserve and ought to have the favor of God in their life. 15 more seconds. You ought to have four names down. 
And now you got the fifth name. I want you to just put that aside. You can close it up. Don't erase it if it's in your iPhone or iPad. But we're going to come back to it in just a moment. So just lay it aside. And let's turn over to Psalm chapter 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, Psalms chapter 5, verse 12. It says, You, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. Now, I want you to notice, who is doing the blessing here? Open book test. The Lord. You, O Lord, will bless the righteous. So, the person doing the blessing here is the Lord. Now, what, who... Who is he blessing? He's blessing the righteous. Who are the righteous? Point to yourself. That's me. We are the righteous. The righteous are those who are saved, those who are born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us that he might make us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the Lord, God Almighty, he's blessing you and I. What's he blessing us with? Everybody say it. Favor. Turn to somebody and say favor. All right? I want you to turn over to Psalms chapter 30. We're going to go through about four or five scripture here, all to lay a foundation to get you ready for what we're going to share here tonight, what God's going to put into your heart. Get ready. God's going to rock your world right now with some, a revelation that's so huge, so critical, so important, so magnificent magnificent of what God's done for us. Psalm 512 says, The Lord has blessed, will bless the righteous with favor. Psalm chapter 30, if you're there, shout amen. amen. Verse 5, For his anger lasts only a moment. Who is his anger? Who is his? God. Wow, think about that a moment. God gets angry. So anger must not be bad. In fact, anger can be healthy. Anger can right, be righteous. Sometimes when we think about anger, it gets a, a bad rap. Anger is not necessarily bad. Anger is a natural emotion. Natural, uh, anger can be a healthy thing. It's how you respond to that anger. Paul says, don't let your anger lead to sin. What happens with most people is they don't respond to anger properly. It turns into rage, turns into something that's sinful and wrong. And uh, so the way we ought to handle it is the way God handles it. He was angry for only a... So if you get angry, just let it be for a moment. Aren't you glad God's only anger for a moment? <laughs> Say amen. But, now watch this, but his favor lasts a lifetime. What lasts a lifetime? Everybody say favor. So we find in Psalm chapter 5, God blesses us with favor favor then we find over here in psalm 30 that favor lasts how long a lifetime man this is huge all right let's turn over to proverbs chapter 3 proverbs chapter 3 is just a few more pages over proverbs follows psalms chapter 3 verse 4 it says and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of god and man we can have favor everybody say favor we can have favor both with God and with man. So God blesses us with favor. He blesses the righteous. Everybody say, that's me. that's me. Wave your hands. That's me, God. That's me. I qualify. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you're not, if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I got good news. Tonight you can make him. We'll make him Lord and Savior, and you can get in on this favor, and you'll find out in just a moment why you want to get in on it. But if you're righteous, if you're saved, if you're redeemed, if you're saved, then God blesses you with favor. This favor is for a lifetime. And then in Proverbs 3, we find that this favor is with God and with man. And this thing is getting pretty cool, but let, let's go on. Let's go to another verse. Go to Luke chapter 2. So we're going to turn over to the New Testament now. It goes... Matthew, Mark, Luke, we're going to go to chapter 2, and we're going to go to verse 52. And it says, and Jesus increased, or King James says, grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Now notice, Jesus increased. He grew. That word grow or grew means to increase. He grew, he grew and he increased in three different areas. He grew in wisdom. 
Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge and understanding. Uh, this is huge. Uh, and, and we can tap into this same wisdom. Well, uh, I'm not going to talk about wisdom tonight, but uh, the principles we're going to share here tonight about favor can go along with wisdom. We need wisdom in, in our life, and we can have that wisdom. See, a lot of people have knowledge. A lot of people have understanding, but they have no wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to take what you know and put it into practice, apply it in your life. Jesus grew in that wisdom. He grew in stature. That means he grew in his influence. Jesus grew in his impact and influence. You and I can grow in our stature and influence. In fact, God wants us to be a brighter light. He wants your stature to increase in this world. It's a mandate upon us. What I'm sharing tonight is something God desperately wants to see in our lives. Just as Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, Stature, he wants you to grow in wisdom and stature. But he also grew in what? Favor. Everybody say favor. Tonight, I want to talk about this favor, and particularly about growing in favor, increasing in favor, releasing the favor of God in your life, tapping in to this blessing. God has blessed you with this, this favor. And tonight, I want to challenge you. I want to share some things with you that can release that favor to a degree to a greater degree in your life that you will grow and increase in that favor. Now, if Jesus grew in favor, how many of you think we ought to grow in favor? If the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, he increased in favor, then I believe we should. We ought to increase in favor. Amen. Absolutely. So what I want to share now, what I'm going to do the next 30 minutes, is I'm going to share with you six keys from God's Word of how you can increase and grow in God's favor. First of all, we've laid a foundation. I hope we've, I could go to about 50 more. There are so many verses on God's favor, but what I wanted to establish here is one to see that God has blessed you with favor. As a redeemed person, as a saved person, as a follower of Christ. He's blessed you with that favor. That favor is for a lifetime. That favor is to be with God. Now, how, is that awesome or what, to have favor with God? And with man. And that favor is something that we can grow in and increase in. So, okay, how can we grow? Well, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm going to give you tonight quickly six things, six, six keys that can help you grow in God's favor. And we're going to find three of them right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to read verse 9 through verse 12. And I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. If you don't have it, they'll have it up on the screen. Because the Amplified really brings out the points that I want to bring out here tonight when it comes to growing in God's favor. So we're reading 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through verse 12. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, but on the contrary, as the scripture says, I has not seen and ear has not heard and it has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. So what Paul, Paul here, he's quoting an Old Testament verse out of Isaiah. And what he says here is the unredeemed person could not comprehend, understand the things God had prepared for them, the mysteries, the hidden things. He's, he says, eyes not seen, ears not heard. A lot of people quote that verse and they stop there. And so they have the mindset as, well, you just never know what God's going to do. We don't know what, what God has for us because they stay there in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament verse. Paul sets up what he wants to reveal to us by quoting that verse. He goes on, and the next verse, verse 10, he says, yet, or but, or however, to us. Who is us? Believers, the redeemed, the saved, the righteous. However, to us, God has unveiled and revealed them. Them, what's them? The mysteries, the hidden things that he was referring to in verse 9. We're going to get a glimpse of exactly what he was talking about here in just a moment. He's going to give it to us in verse 12. So he says, us, we that are redeemed, he has revealed them to us. How? By and through his spirit. 
For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottom, bottomless things of God's divine counsel and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. So you and I, by the Spirit, can know these hidden things. These mysteries, these things that are bottomless, those, those things that are so deep, that uh, are profound, the things that in the natural you couldn't even begin to understand. How do we understand them? It's by the Spirit. He gives us further explanation, verse 11. For what a person perceives or knows or understands, what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him. Just as no one discerns or comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So the, our ability to grasp the mysteries, the hidden things, this, this, this incredible blessing that, that God has for us that we're going to see exactly what it is, the only way we can discern it, understand it, it's by the Spirit. You're not going to be able to figure this out in your own ability. It's not something we can reason. It's not by logic. And what I'm sharing tonight, what I'm going to be teaching on line upon line and precept upon precept, my prayer is that you will get the revelation by the Spirit of God. We need revelation. Father, I pray that right now. Lord, every eye open, every heart to receive. You're the teacher. We yield to you. Lord, let there be revelation knowledge imparted that we would grasp the things that you have unveiled to us as the redeemed, this incredible blessing that you've given us that by the Spirit we grasp it by revelation. Every person in here, let them not walk out of here tonight to get exactly what you're wanting them to see through this word tonight. Verse 12, now watch this. This is the verse I want to get to. We're going to share six things. Three of them are right here of how to grow in the favor of God. Verse 12, it says, Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. Everybody shout amen. amen. But the Holy Spirit. How many of you glad you've got the Holy Spirit? Glory. Who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of God divine nature and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. I want to read verse 12 again. The Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize, comprehend, and appreciate the gifts of divine favor. That's the word of the Lord tonight. I want you to grasp God's divine favor. I want you to grow in the favor like Jesus grew. There are three keys right here. Realize, comprehend, and appreciate the gifts of divine favor. If you're going to grow in God's favor, if you're going to put God's favor into practice in your life, you've got to realize, you've got to comprehend, and you've got to appreciate so let's talk about realizing. What's it mean you've got to realize? You've got to realize it's for you. You've got to realize what this favor is. What does it mean we have the favor of God? Let's talk about favor for a moment. Let's talk about it in just in a natural setting. How many of you, when you went to school, there was somebody in your class that the teacher just seemed to like more than anybody else? It might have been you. It might have been someone. It was teacher's teacher's pet. Why was it teacher's pet? Because the teacher seemed to favor that student. Now, I'm sure that's not the case. My daughter's a teacher. We've got great teachers, and I know teachers are fair, and, and, and they treat everybody equally. But it just sometimes seems, I, I know the classes I were in, it just seemed sometimes the teacher just liked somebody better than me. There, it always seemed to have favor towards one of those students. My mom always gives me favor. I, I'm my mom's favor. I'm talking about favor, and we're going to get to godly, divine favor in a moment. I just wanted to help you understand what we're talking about here. If you don't realize what favor is and that you qualify for it, you're never going to be able to access it like you need to. You're not going to see the fruit of it in your life. You're not going to grow in it. We've got to realize it. I'm my mom's favorite. You can ask my sister. I've got two sisters, younger sisters. Uh, this isn't a secret. It's not hidden from me. Everybody knows I'm my mom's favorite. I know I'm my mom's favorite. My wife knows I'm my mom's favorite. My mom knows I'm her favorite. It's just, I'm, we're going to go home. and I'm gonna, She lives in Nebraska. We're going to go back there next week and, and, and see her. And I know she's already getting things ready for me. I just know it. 
because I'm her favorite. I mean, growing up, she could make the best homemade cinnamon rolls. I mean, cinnamon bond didn't, doesn't have anything on my mom. I mean, the way she could make cinnamon rolls, she would knead that dough and get it prepared, and she would let it raise a few times, and then she put it in this, this, this pan, and those things, I mean, they would raise up big. And, and the right cinnamon and, and, and the right topping on it. And here's how, not, not, not that she just made the cinnamon rolls for me, but here's how I knew I was her favorite. I liked the center ones. I didn't like the ones on the side with the crust on them. So nobody but I, my mom made sure I got the center cinnamon rolls. <laughs> preferential treatment. Everybody say preferential treatment. That's favor. I got the cinnamon. Nobody messed with this. My sister, even now when I go home, she makes homemade cinnamon rolls. Nobody touches the center cinnamon rolls. I'm her favorite. She, I love watermelon. Where we grew up in Nebraska, it was, it, there was an area there that was known for incredible watermelons. I know over by Enid, Oklahoma, they've got uh, great watermelon patches over here, but there was just the right sandy soil that could just, I mean, juicy, sweet, super sweet watermelon. Icy cold in the middle of hot summer. But what's the best part of the watermelon? The center. What's the worst part about watermelon? The seeds. My mom would always get me the center part of the watermelon and get all the seeds out. I'm just a favor. Everybody say favor. favor. See, when we're talking about favor, you've got to realize, I'm talking about my mom and talking about teacher's pets, but listen, God wants to give and bless you with the same favor, preferential treatment. Let me give you a definition of biblical definition of favor everybody say favor. favor it can be defined as this the friendly disposition from which kind acts proceed to assist to provide with special advantages to receive preferential treatment that's God's heart towards us he wants to bless us he wants to help us he wants to promote us he wants to treat us special favor is special affection of God toward you that releases an influence on you so that others are inclined to like you or to cooperate with you. Everybody shout favor. favor. This, and, and listen, God's already blessed you with this. Psalm chapter 5, the Lord has blessed the righteous with favor. But if we're going to grow in this We've got to realize it. Hey, I've got this favor, this preferential treatment that God has towards me. Why? Because I'm his child. Just because it's like I'm my mom's child, she gave me preferential treatment. The Father in heaven is giving you preferential treatment. Blessing and favor are synonymous. The blessing and the favor of God are being released in your life. But watch this. There's an enemy that is working overtime, a lifetime, to try and restrict, hinder you from accessing that favor. And to be frank with you, he's done a pretty good job of deceiving and lying the bulk of the body of Christ of not tapping in and growing in and increasing in the favor that God has for you. He's lied, he's deceived, and he's kept us from accessing what God has for us. And it's his favor, divine favor, with him and with man. And tonight, I'm on assignment to help bring revelation and take away the hindrances and the things that are holding you back to step in and grow into the divine favor that God has for you. Everybody shout amen. amen. Get ready. God's divine favor is coming your way. We're not going to allow the enemy to keep it from us. Now, I want you to take out that sheet where you wrote down those five names. And I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to look at those five names. And I want to ask you, how many of you, very quickly, I want by show of hands, how many of you have your name on that sheet? <laughs> Why not? There's a few of you. Yeah, the ones that got your name down, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's great. Cameron, you got that? Good. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Get, the, get on. Every one of you should have had your name on there. Could it be your name is not on that list because you didn't think you deserved it? Maybe you didn't think you were worthy. Maybe you thought there was something not going on in your life that maybe disqualified you for the favor of God. 
I want you to know you can't earn, you don't deserve God's favor. Think about it for a moment. Is there anybody who really deserves God's favor? Is there anybody, anything you could do to earn God's favor? No. The righteous. The only way you qualify for the favor of God is by being born again, becoming the redeemed, becoming the righteous. And as you do, then you receive the favor of God in your life. There's nothing that could be more clearly. In that verse, chapter 12, it says, He freely and lavishly bestows on us that divine favor. Freely. He lavishes that favor upon us. The first key of walking in, growing in, and putting God's favor into use in your life is you've got to realize it. God's favor, what it is, and that it's for you. If you're saved, if you're the redeemed, if you're a follower of Christ, then he's blessed you with that favor for a lifetime. With God and with man. Realize it. Claim it. In fact, just lift up your hand right now and just say, God, I receive your favor. The second key of growing in favor is that you comprehend that favor. Comprehend what? Comprehend what that favor will do for you. Comprehend the value of that favor. I want to read a verse to you out of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. It says, a good name is to be more desired than great riches. Now, that's, we could stop there and preach that. Your character is important. Your lifestyle is important. It's something to be desired more than riches. A good name will get you further than money could ever get you. But it goes on to say this. It says, favor is better than silver and gold. Favor is is more valuable than silver and gold. You've got to comprehend how incredibly valuable favor is in order for you to pursue it. If you don't understand the value of something, you'll never pursue it. While it's a free gift from God that he gives to us, you've got to pursue it. My wife, I immediately saw the value in my wife when I was two years old. That was, not that far off, but <laughs> since fifth grade, high school sweethearts, 40 years of marriage, yay. And I'm pursuing her. I pursued her. I'm still pursuing her. I mean, I know what a good thing is. When, I, when you know the va value of something, you go after it. You pursue it, okay? Favor. We're talking about favor. We're talking about growing in favor, increasing favor in your life. How's that going to happen? Well, you've got to realize you qualify. It's yours, what that favor is. Now you've got to begin to comprehend the value of it, what it'll do for you. Because when you see that it's more valuable than silver or gold, then you'll do whatever it takes to go after it, to pursue it. Do you know that there are things favor can do for you that no amount of money can. That's why it's more valuable than silver or gold. It's been said that one moment of God's favor is worth more than a thousand days, thousand hours of labor. What's that mean? It means in one moment of God's favor, he can do something in your life that it might take you a year, 10 years, 15 years to do. But in just one fleeting moment of God's favor in your life, he can unravel, he can construct, he can do things that might take you years to do. God's favor is so valuable. When you understand the value of it, you'll pursue it. You'll, when you comprehend it, you'll go after it. There are so many examples in the Bible of things that God's favor does for people's, in people's life. I don't have time to go through. I'm going to give you 10 benefits. I'm going to very quickly go through these. You can write down the scriptures and look at them later in your own study time. But favor is more valuable than silver and gold. You've got to comprehend that in order to pursue it. 
You've got to understand what God's favor can do for you. Let me give you 10 benefits, 10 things that God's favor can do for you. Favor can produce supernatural increase and promotion. Genesis 39, 21. This is where Joseph was granted favor with the prison warden, and he was given charge over all of the prisoners in that, in that prison. He received favor. Favor can bring supernatural increase and promotion. If you're looking for promotion, God's favor can bring it in your life. Favor can produce restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Exodus 3, 21. We see God giving favor to the Israelites in the midst of the Egyptians when they went out of Israel with everything, all the riches, everything that they had lost everything that they had worked for, all the hours, God restored it. If you need restoration in your life or in an area, God, by his favor, favor is incredibly powerful. There are so many benefits to it. It can restore. Favor can produce honor in the midst of your adversaries. It can deliver you. Exodus 11, verse 3. If you're stuck in some place and it seems like something's holding you back, you seem to be in a hole, God can deliver you by his favor. Favor produces increase of assets, especially in the area of real estate. Deuteronomy 33, 23. Naphtali got the, the land given to him because of God's favor. Favor produces great victories in the midst of great impossibilities. Joshua eleven twenty. I'm telling you, even if you're in a battle that looks like there's no way out, God's favor can bring victory. There is power in God's favor. In God's favor. Favor produces recognition even when you seem the least likely to receive it. 1 Samuel 16, verse 22. David, the little lonely shepherd, nobody thought, but God's favor was on David's life. Favor. You've got to comprehend what favor can do. If you're going to grow in that favor, Increase in that favor. You've got to comprehend the, the power of it, the, the value of it. Favor can produce prominence and preferential treatment. Esther 2.17. Esther found favor with the king. Think about it. She was picked over all the other women. How come? There was favor on her life. Favor can produce peti petitions granted even by ungodly civil authorities. Esther 5 verse 8. So even when you have to deal with entities that are ungodly or not in the realm you no normally have to deal with. We have to do that as a church sometimes. We've got to get permits. We've got to deal with different agencies, different governments, different situations. We're always declaring, we're decreeing. We've got favor. God's favor can bring victory in those areas. What else can God's favor do? Favor causes policies, rules, and regulations and laws to be changed for your behalf. God can reverse the situation. When you're walking in God's favor, what else can God's favor do? Favor produces victory in the midst of battles that you don't even have to fight. When you're facing a battle, God can bring victory without you even having to raise a hand. You can find an example of that in Psalm 44, verse 3. God's favor. What can God's favor do? God's favor can open doors for you. God's favor can bring breakthrough in your life. God's favor can bring deliverance. God's favor can bring restoration in your life. God's favor is more valuable than silver and gold. Yeah, you could do everything that you need to do. You need to do all that you can. But I'm telling you, God's favor can trump all of that. And in the most desperate, in the most trying times, God's favor can bring increase, blessing, turnaround in your life. Everybody shout favor. So we, we got to realize what God's favor is. we got to comprehend what God's favor is. I'm going to go the, through the next couple of three of these a little more quickly because I want to get to the last one, which I think is the greatest secret to God's favor. The third, appreciate God's favor. We realize, we comprehend, we appreciate. When God blesses you, make sure you give him the credit for it. Don't be like Uzziah. Pastor Sharon was talking about the story. He started thinking he had a little bit more to do with all the results he was getting than he had. And that's a problem a lot of people have in the church today. They begin to think it's because of what they did. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more on this, the last secret of 
growing in God's favor. But we need to appreciate what God does for us. I'm so grateful for his favor. I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. I'm so grateful for my mom's favor in my life. <laughs> when, when, you, when you get that preferential treatment, I mean immediately you need to give God praise for it. When you begin to appreciate it and give thanks for him, he's going to be that much more in a hurry to get some more favor coming your way. You're, you're going to grow in it. Not only appreciate when you receive favor, here's another thing I want you to do. I want you to appreciate and be grateful for other people that get favor. See, what, what, what's God's favor? God's favor can happen in a lot of ways. It's like if you go to Disney World and, and you get to go to those long lines. How many ever been to Disney World? And, and they got those long lines that you got to get in and you got to wait, I don't know, 30 minutes, hour to get up there. What if somebody came along and said, you know, come on, I want to take you to the front of the line. Excuse me. Excuse me. And all those guys... Who do they think they are? Got just a little bit of favor. Got a little bit of, little bit of favor here going to the front of the line. Now, if you're standing in that line and somebody gets favor, are you the one that's sitting there, oh, what's going on? I've been here longer than they've been. Or are you, man, that guy's got favor. I'm so, so grateful for the favor on that person's life. What would happen if you started being thankful for the favor that was in other people's life? You know what I think would happen? I think all of a sudden you'd start seeing more favor in your life. We, we can, I, I, I rejoice. When I see favor, I was listening to Pastor Paul tell his testimony last night. They got back from, from a missions trip into Mexico, and, and he had quite an ordeal getting, getting down there. And, and, you know, my first thought was, he should have checked those flights. You know, my, my prophetic gift in here, I'm, I'm thinking of all the things he should have done. Where was the lease on this deal? Where, you know. <laughs> but... As he told the story, I began to just rejoice in the favor that he had. Super, the reason he got where, I don't have time to tell the story. He'll tell another time. Or you can get the tape. He told it last night, 5 o'clock service. But I was just thinking, that's just God's favor. Now, he had, he, had to, he had to pursue it. He had to push through it. But every time he pushed through it, there was God on the spot with favor, favor, favor. <laughs> Most everybody else would just quit and give up. But he kept on pursuing. And as he pursued it, he received God's favor. We need to appreciate God's favor. If you want to increase in God's favor, you want to see favor activated in your life, then you've got to be able to realize it, comprehend it, and you've got to appreciate it. Let me give you three more real quickly. The fourth thing that we can do to grow in favor is to be favorable towards others. In other words, sow favor. You reap what you sow. Psalm 112 verse 5 says, Goodwill comes to him who is generous. The King James says, those who show favor and lends freely and conducts his affairs with justice. If you want to see more favor in your life, start giving favor. Start sowing favor. What do you mean? You can exercise favor into people's lives in lots of different arenas, in lots of different ways. How about when you go to the checkout line? And the checkout clerk just isn't quite handling things the way they ought to be handled. They're not quite as fast. Do you get impatient? Do you get upset? Or do you show some favor towards that ch checkout clerk? When you go out to eat, the waitress that's waiting on you, are you showing favor towards that person? Sowing favor. Every arena, every place you go, are you demanding? Are you wanting your way? Are you wanting things to happen? Are you one who wants to release favor into people's lives? Watch what happens. What you sow is what you're going to reap. You want to increase in favor? You have the capacity to sow favor into people's life, no matter where you're at, in the center of influences that you have, in the arenas that you have. Begin to sow favor. Begin to be favorable towards others. The fifth thing you can do in order to increase in your favor is begin to confess God's favor. You will possess what you confess. You begin to declare, thank you, Jesus, that I have favor with you and favor with man, that you surround me with favor, that every place I go, you go before me with favor. You begin to declare it. You begin to confess it. Let me just challenge you. Let me give you this assignment. Why not, instead of being critical, negative, being upset, Speaking, uh, Pastor Sharon ministered this morning on speaking God's word. It's, it's an 
It's part of living by faith. We don't live by sight. Let's begin to confess and speak God's favor into the situation. Lord, I thank you that I have favor. I'm surrounded by favor. Your favor is like a shield about me. If you want to see favor activated in your life, you want to see more favor in your life, then begin to confess favor in your life. Don't begin to become critical and negative, but begin to declare God's favor. The last thing, and probably the, maybe the greatest secret, the greatest key to growing in favor is to enlarge your connection to the source. Proverbs 8.35 says, whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor. The source of favor is the Lord. If you want to increase the favor flowing into your life, then increase the connection to the source. What do I mean by that? The relationship. When you think about anything that you receive, there's a source. Internet. In order for you to have access to the internet, you've got to be connected to the internet. And how much you can get out of the internet is going to be determined by your connection. How many of you wish you had a bigger connection to the internet? Particularly if you're working with video or anything. It, I mean, it can really be slow. We as a church, we, we stream live. There's things we've had to continually increase the capacity. We've had to outsource so we can enlarge our connection so we can get more data, more information out and receive more information in. If you keep with the same connection, you're going to limit what you can receive. Growing up, we used to irrigate our land by water that came from a dam. That dam came down through canals, and the canals came to where our property was, and then there was a gate. You open up that gate to let the water in, and then you put the water in some tubes down the rows of corn. Ever how much they opened up the gate determined how much water got to us. The more water you wanted, the more the gate had to be open. The greater the connection had to be in order to get more water. You want more favor? you got to increase your connection. you got to enlarge that connection. Peter put it this way, that you grow in favor through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the source of our favor. If you want to see greater favor in your life, you want to grow in it, grow in your connection with him. I want to know him more. See, when you know your relationship with him, grow, then all of a sudden your connection begins to enlarge and you have the capacity to receive more of God's favor into your life. It's not that he, he's holding back favor. His favor is that there's a reservoir of favor he's trying to get to you. But it can only come through the connection that you have with him. And you can enlarge that connection by continuing to develop your relationship with him through worship, through prayer, through the word of God, of spending time, of, of just declaring his goodness in your life. And when you do, then all of a sudden the, the connection begins to enlarge and the flow of God's favor begins to come into your life. And that favor, goodness, and mercy are following you all the days of life. The blessings of God are running you down and overtaking you. Every place you go, it's the favor of God that's coming your way. I want you to know, there is an ocean, unlimited source of God's favor that he's blessed you with, and he wants to get it into your life. We've got to be disciplined to grow in that. We've got to realize what that favor is that we qualify for. We, we've got to understand and comprehend exactly how valuable that, that favor is. We've got to be grateful for the favor that we have. We begin to begin to sow that favor into other people's lives. We begin to confess it, but we begin to grow in our relationship with the Lord in the knowledge of him. And I can guarantee you, there is a multiplied return on that investment. As you invest in that relationship, as I pursued my wife, I invested in my relationship with her. I saw the value of her. I pursued her. And as I developed that relationship, all of a sudden, the connection and the Return that I was getting back from her, just it continues to blow me away. I'm talking about my wife. Think about the Lord. He is waiting to blow you away. And I mean that in a positive, positive way. With his favor. Grow in the knowledge of him. Live for him. Commit to him. 
Be obedient to him. Let him work in your life. He's the potter, we're the clay. He's working in us to will and to do his good pleasure. And I'm telling you, when you make that investment, it'll be the greatest return. See, God can give you favor in every arena of your life. Businessmen, he can give you favor with suppliers. He can give you favor with clients. He can give you favor with your workers. He can give favor to you in every arena. You that are struggling in your marriage, God can give favor in that relationship. Children, he can give you favor with that. You that need jobs, favor, preferential treatment. You may not have the best qualifications, but because of God's favor, your application's coming to the top. How are you going to tap into that favor? I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm growing in the knowledge of him, and I'm going to expect that favor. I expect God's favor to flow in my life. Why? Because he's my father. He's my savior. Just like I expect my mom, I'm going next week. Mom, I'm expecting homemade cinnamon rolls. I'm speaking fried chicken. I'm expecting all of the things that I get from my mom. And I know she won't let me down. But I know my God is more faithful than my mom. And I expect that favor to flow my way. Now, one more thing, and I'm going to pray for you. Because God wants to open up the windows of heaven and pour favor. You're ready to get more favor in your life. But I want to share two things in closing that are very important about favor. With favor comes responsibility. God blesses you, and he gives you favor but he expects you to be responsible with it. And he gives you favor for a purpose. While God's favor will bring blessing into your life and breakthrough and turnaround and financial breakthroughs in your life, that's not the main purpose. He wants to give you favor so that you can be a bigger blessing in the world today. He wants you. He wants me. He wants the church to arise in the hour that we live in to be the light and to be the salt. He's waiting to download favor into your life so that we can be a light beaming in darkness. There's a responsibility. I'm, get ready for favor to come into your life, but get ready to be responsible with that favor. Get ready to use that favor, not just on yourself, but to use that favor in order to be a greater blessing. Every head bowed and every eye closed all across this room. God wants to give you favor in your life. He wants to bless you in areas that you didn't think were possible. He wants to deliver you out of situations just like he did the Israelites. He gave them favor and brought them out of bondage. Joseph is the greatest story of favor you've ever seen. God, got, God gave Joseph favor to bring him out of a pit, to bring him out of a prison, and to put him into a palace. And the reason God gave Joseph favor was in the end he could be a blessing to his family and deliver them and bring them in to the place God had for them. God wants to deliver you out of the pit. He wants to deliver you out of the prison you may be in. And he wants to bring you into the palace so that you can be a greater blessing. All across this room, no matter where you are in your life, if you need God's favor right now in a situation, I want to pray for you tonight for God to bring favor in your life, to bring breakthrough in a situation. So you may be one of those people entangled in a legal battle with some agency or some governmental authority. And you're doing everything you think you can do in your own power and your might. God's favor can turn it around. One moment of God's favor is worth more than a thousand years of labor. God's favor can do things that money cannot do. All across this room, if you say, I need favor in a situation, I need favor in my marriage, I need favor in my job, I need favor in my finances, I need favor in that legal situation, I need favor in my life, I need God's favor upon me. I just need to know God's favor is upon me. I want to pray for you all across the room. If that's you, say, that's me, would you pray for me? Right here, just lift your hand up and say, that's me. Yeah, right over here, yeah. All across the room, not surprising. I need God's favor in my life. I want everybody to stand up with me. If you raised your hand, I want you to come very quickly. I want to pray for you. You say, I need God's favor. It's important to take that step because it's a step of faith. It's not me. It, it, you're coming through the, to the Lord. The Lord is your, faith, is your source of favor. So you come here. If you don't know the Lord, you've never received, you're not in that redeemed group, then God wants you to step into that regret 
Redeemed group because he is waiting to put his favor upon your life. I want you to come right now. God wants you in his kingdom. He wants you in his family because he wants to shower you with favor, the favor of God in your life. And as you come tonight saying, I need God's favor, you need to be committed in yourself to the things that we just shared. You can't earn God's favor. You don't deserve God's favor, but you definitely can grow in God's favor. That seems kind of conflicting. If it's free, if I, th I can't earn it, I can't deserve it, then why do I do it? We grow in it. Jesus grew in the favor. It's like, it's like the piano over here. I can play the piano, but barely. So you can say, I've been given a piano to play, and I've got one at home, and I love playing it when nobody else is around. And I'm just sitting there making my melodies and, and playing. But I could get a whole lot better at playing the piano. I could grow in, in my ability to play that piano. Computers. You, you can have the computer freely given to you. Somebody might give it to you, and you can use it. But you can grow in what that computer. I know there's a whole lot more the computer can do that I have no ability to. There's so much more God's favor can do in your life. You can grow in it. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. But you definitely can increase your relationship with him and open up that connection to where all of a sudden, instead of just getting that drip, there's a flow of God's favor in your life. Father, I pray for every person. Lift up your hands. He's the source. Lord, I pray for every one of these right now across this room, those that are watching. Lord, we thank you that you, Lord, have blessed us with favor. Lord, you freely, lavishly have bestowed your favor upon us. Now, Lord, we're wanting to tap into that favor in our life. Lord, we want you to download it. We want to receive it. We want to accept it. We realize, Lord, it's not what we've done, but it's what you've done. And as a child of God, Lord, we are a candidate for that favor in our life. We understand, Lord, that it's only in you that we're able to receive the favor. And we're giving you all the glory and all the praise for the favor in our life. And Lord, we want to use your favor to bring you glory to use your favor to set the captives free. Lord, not only to bless us, but to bless others. Now just say this after me. Just say, Jesus, I put my eyes on you. You're my source, my source of favor. I receive favor in my situation. Just speak over that situation now. Whatever you need that favor for, I receive favor for my marriage. I receive favor for that job. I receive favor for that breakthrough with that that legal situation. I receive favor, Lord. Favor, 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 favor. Divine favor. Say, I've got favor with you and favor with man. And I'm going to be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Now just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him all across this room. Yeah, come on. Give him a shout. Everybody shout favor. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're going we're gonna to get ready to walk out of here. But I want you to commit as you walk out of here to begin to declare that I'm surrounded with favor. I've got favor with man and favor with God. It's like a shield about me. Every place I go, I've got favor. Even when you're standing in the midst of a battle that looks impossible, like Jehoshaphat, I've got favor. I've got favor. He's going to give you land that you hadn't paid for. He's going to give you favor that you hadn't even thought about. I'm telling you, get ready. Get ready. Be ready to walk with it responsibility. With responsibility. Understand the enemy wants to hinder you from walking in that. He's going to try to restrict you. The moment he walk out of here, you're going you're gonna to get hit with things trying to restrict you from accessing God's favor. Don't fall for the lie of the enemy. You stay true in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now for tonight. Lord, thank you for the favor in my life. Lord, you know, apart from you, we can do nothing. You're the vine. We're the branches. I'll just share this with you. One of the 
things that concerns me in the body of Christ, particularly in charismatic circles, is a tendency to begin to lean more on self than on the Lord. It's a balancing act. But we've got to understand our strength, our source, is from the Lord. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. To just to illustrate what I'm talking about, so many people put the emphasis on I. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. The emphasis on Christ. It's through Christ. We've got to get up. We've got to get out of the boat. We've got to do our part. But don't think for a moment it's because of what you've done. We give, if you give testimony, give testimony to Christ. Not testimony to you. Testimony to Christ. He's the deliverer. He's the healer. He's the one that gives favor. Come on, give him a shout. He's going to give you favor. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Praise God. Wednesday night, come back for the word of the Lord. And this next weekend, we have our illustrated message. Take those flyers with you. If you're here considering victory or home church, if you'd get your things and come right over here, John, Pastor John Gomez will gr greet you, meet with you. We've got some things for you. If you're visiting, stop by our visitor area out in front there. We have some refreshments for you. We want to get to know you a little bit better. Make sure you're declaring and confessing God's favor in your life. Bless the fruit of